Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna go through some of the anatomical and physiological differences between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So first thing, sympathetic nervous system is also known as the fight or flight system. It gets activated in times of fear so that you can maintain homeostasis when you're either fighting or needing to run away to fight another day. The parasympathetic nervous system gets activated in times of rest and relaxation to maintain homeostasis. When we look at these two different aspects of what we call the autonomic or automatic nervous system, what you'll find is that they are both made up. So these are some similarities. They're both made up of two neuron chains. So as you can see, both have neurons leaving either the brain or spinal cord. This neuron is termed the preganglionic neuron. So let's write that up. So the neuron that leaves for both sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system, the first neuron that exits the spinal cord is called the preganglionic neuron. And then the neuron that it speaks to after that, the second neuron in the chain is called the postganglionic neuron. Now, why is it called this? Because the term ganglion refers to a nerve cell body that's located outside of the central nervous system. For example, this first neuron is called preganglionic because its cell body is located in the central nervous system. You can see it there, 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 and there. So it's preganglionic. This is the postganglionic neuron because it has a cell body outside of the central nervous system. That's both sympathetic and parasympathetic. Next thing is this. For the sympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic neuron is short compared to the postganglionic neuron. So I've drawn up for the sympathetic nervous system up in red, and for the parasympathetic, I've drawn it in blue. Sympathetic, the preganglionic neuron is short compared to the postganglionic neuron, and it's the opposite for the parasympathetic. The preganglionic is long, postganglionic is short. Now, why is this? Because the sympathetic nervous system, its ganglia, right, of the postganglionic neuron sitting outside of the central nervous system is located very close to the spinal cord. It's paravertebral, right next to it. And this is often called the paravertebral ganglia or ganglionic chain. And there's actually a group of neurons that you can see that lie next to the spinal cord here. And that's there so that when a signal gets sent out, it can actually travel up and down. This is a thing with the sympathetic nervous system. If you just activate one, you end up activating all of the sympathetic nervous system. I'll talk more about that shortly. All right, next thing is this. When we talk about sympathetic, it's also termed the thoracolumbar system because the neurons that exit, exit at either the thoracic or lumbar portion of the spinal cord. For the parasympathetic, it's also known as craniosacral because the neurons exit at either the cranium or the sacral region. So if it's exiting the cranium, it means these must be cranial nerves, a couple of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves, There's actual four that are part of the sympathetic nervous system. This, these are cranial nerves three, seven, nine, and 10. Cranial nerve three is ocular motor, seven is facial, nine is glossopharyngeal, and 10 is vagus. We'll talk a bit about that in a sec. All right, when we look at, doesn't matter, sympathetic or parasympathetic, when the action potential or signal gets sent down the preganglionic neuron and gets to the very end, it has to release a neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter that is released in both sympathetic and parasympathetic from the preganglionic neuron is going to be acetylcholine. So acetylcholine, so that's how you remember, acetylcholine is always the neurotransmitter released from the preganglionic neuron. And you can write acetylcholine like that, A-C-H. Now you may be thinking, why is there only one neuron here? I'll talk about that shortly, but we refer to it as the preganglionic neuron, so it is releasing acetylcholine. In order for this neurotransmitter acetylcholine to stimulate the postganglionic neuron, it must bind to receptors that are specific for acetylcholine, and in this case, these receptors are known as nicotinic receptors. So I'm gonna draw up, I'm gonna write an N there to highlight that they're gonna be binding to nicotinic receptors. Even here, when these, this acetylcholine binds to the adrenal gland at the kidneys, nicotinic receptors. All right, so the acetylcholine is bound to the nicotinic receptors. Again, doesn't matter, sympathetic and parasympathetic, stimulated an action potential or a signal. Continuing down the postganglionic neuron, and it's heading now towards the effector. 
the effector is the target organ organ so let's now separate them let's just focus on parasympathetic nervous system so neurons coming out of the cranio and sacral area for example in times of resting and digesting what do we need to do one thing is that we don't need to open our pupils up we open our pupils up if we need to see around us maybe in times of fear or stress we need to observe our surroundings in case there's a threat but when you relax and you're at home maybe you want to focus on reading a book the pupils constrict so when this signal gets sent down it's going to stimulate via the cranial nerve 3 pupillary constriction another thing is you might be relaxing to eat digestion you need to salivate if you're ingesting food to digest that food because of all the enzymes in the saliva so salivation as well is part of the parasympathetic nervous system just two examples from cranial nerves when we go down and I've drawn the bladder up here when you're relaxing this parasympathetic nervous system is what gets stimulated in order for you to wee urination and that means it tells the bladder to contract parasympathetic nervous system tells the bladder to contract now we haven't spoken about what the neurotransmitter is here for the parasympathetic nervous system well all you need to remember for the parasympathetic nervous system is acetylcholine so again acetylcholine is what is used for the parasympathetic nervous system at both the preganglionic neuron and the postganglionic neuron now is the receptor nicotinic no it's muscarinic they're the two different types nicotinic or muscarinic an n or an m let's actually write them up so that you're aware nicotinic and muscarinic now there's different subcategories of each but at the moment just know nicotinic at the postganglionic neuron muscarinic at the effector for the parasympathetic nervous system if we look at the sympathetic nervous system as we send this signal down and it gets to the end let's just say it's innovating the heart what happens when you get scared your heart rate increases and it increases the contractility why because we want to deliver more blood around the body more blood means more oxygen nutrients which means muscles get fed and we can fight or run away what if we're going down here to the adrenal gland it's only a single neuron the preganglionic neuron releasing acetylcholine binding to nicotinic receptors on the adrenal gland which is the hat of the kidney it's called the adrenal gland for a reason because it releases adrenaline and this is what's really important here the release of adrenaline by the adrenal gland it jumps into the bloodstream which means it goes to the whole body which means every target organ that's associated with the sympathetic nervous system will get adrenaline and will get stimulated to do their thing this is why it's systemic the sympathetic nervous system it's not isolated to individual target organs like you can do with the parasympathetic nervous system all right in that case what is the neurotransmitter released from the postganglionic neuron for the sympathetic nervous system it's adrenaline or more specifically noradrenaline if you're american norepinephrine and epinephrine now noradrenaline is going to bind to adrenaline specific receptors and they're called adrenergic receptors and there's subcategories of adrenergic receptors such as alpha and beta i've done another video on that feel free to watch these noradrenaline neurotransmitters will bind to these adrenergic receptors and stimulate the effect if it's at the heart increase heart rate contractility if it's at the bladder it actually tells it to relax so look this is a couple of examples and differences between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system